I'm out here with the girls. I uh, figured I'd do a quick video on the knife I carry today. In addition to the Cold Steel 4 Max Scout, I uh, cycle through other knives sometimes. And uh, it's okay, Zara. And uh, this is one I carry occasionally. It's the uh, Cold Steel Voyager. Uh, I added this uh, aluminum uh, snaggletooth from Snaggletooth Tactical. I'll give a bit more on information on that in a moment. But uh, like the 4 Max Scout, the blade is an AUS-10. However, this one is full flat ground and much thinner stock. So the edge is quite thin. Uh, I can't remember the specs, but I did. Uh, I uh, measured it with uh, with uh, calipers uh, at one point. It was one of the thinner knives I have. Oh, thank you. My daughter brought me this uh, seed or uh, egg case. I don't really know what that is. Maybe we'll cut it open with the knife and find out. But uh, the, uh, I believe it is a seed. Yeah, there we go. Tested out the knife and did a little bit of learning. Yeah, see there? Alright, let's put it back. Okay. So, uh, the handle is quite comfortable. Uh, it's got these uh, Maltese cross patterns, which give very good traction. However, under the pocket clip, it uh, gives too much traction. It uh, tends to tear pant pockets or, or snag going in and out. So, I uh, took my work sharp knife and tool sharpener and just ground down the uh, texture at that point. Um, the knife comes with two pocket clips because they are not ambidextrous. So you have a left-handed pocket clip and a right-handed pocket clip. If I had been thinking, I would have installed them both. That way I could carry it in either pocket, but I wasn't thinking, so I just threw it away. <laughs> the left-handed one. Um, but uh, it's triad lock, just like the 4Max Scout. Though overall, this is a, uh, in comparison, this is a uh, very much light duty knife. I would put it in the same category as like, uh, you know, Buck 110 or Spyderco Enduro or, or other sort of, uh, you know, thin slicey folders like that instead of something, a big bruiser. But uh, nonetheless, in that category, I would say, I would definitely take this over a Spyderco Enduro. Uh, I have both and I, <laughs> I think it'd be a difficult case to say the Enduro is better at this than anything. Uh, the, um, but, uh, yeah. Oh, uh, I'll demonstrate the, uh, Snaggletooth. Uh, for anyone that doesn't know, that's an aftermarket edition that, uh, sort of emulates the Emerson Wave, uh, as seen on Emerson Knives and Spyderco's, Spyderco Waves. So, you catch on the corner of your pocket, and it will, ah, I kind of bobbled it that time, but... It's uh, much easier in the pocket than it is here. In fact, in the pocket, you have to, uh, when I don't want to wave it out, I'll just uh, put my fingers over it to uh, hold the blade in place until I'm ready to thumb it open. But let's see if I can get a good wave on. There we go, that quickly. Uh, additionally, of course, you can do all the other uh, tricks you can do with any other lock bar. You can hold the lock bar open uh, any other back lock, hold the lock bar open, snap it in place that way, snap it closed. Uh, you can uh, open it with just about any finger you want. Uh, you can do the uh, classic spider drop. Uh, and uh, you can also do my uh, moose knuckle trick. Uh, I don't know if anyone else calls it this, but I. Uh, wrap my two uh, fingers around the uh, thumb studs and just open it that way. Is it practical? Not really, not really, but it's kind of fun. It's just a little trick. Anyway, have a good night.